Welcome to the Hey Taylor podcast, where ambition is a gift, not a burden, where what you desire for your life is 100% possible, and where happiness and success can coexist beautifully. In this podcast, I'm bringing you casual conversations on deep alignment, self-mastery, and high performance. Each week, my guests and I will guide you to go big with your dreams and reconnect you to your infinite potential because I believe you deserve wild happiness and success in every area of your life. On this podcast, we don't shy away from the deep topics and tough love because we know that personal development isn't about going through life. It's about growing through life. And I'm your host, Taylor Thompson. I'm a high performance strategist, business mentor, multi-passionate serial entrepreneur, soon to be author, and your breakthrough personal development bestie. Pull up your note-taking app and let's unlock your next level of happiness and success. Your highest potential is waiting. Welcome back everybody to the podcast. I am so excited to be joined again by my husband, Dr. Taylor Premer. Back again back again. He's so excited to be back again. When I told him that our episode six that we did together, we just kind of did like a Q and a, uh, that is the most popular episode on the podcast so far. And he was excited. So you just need another bump in your podcast. So you're saying. <laughs> Calling the big dogs. If, I get it. <laughs> if people are loving a specific type of content, I'm going to totally bring it back more. So anyways, if you haven't heard our first podcast episode that is episode six and like I said we're just answering some questions that we got from Instagram we got like 35 or 40 questions from Instagram and yeah right now my plan is to have Taylor on maybe once a quarter on the podcast maybe more if you guys want and just to kind of talk about relationships so today we are really just talking about our keys and secrets and tips and things that have worked for us to have a high performing love filled relationship so what we should say is that we're also driving right now and so if it's a little bit loud (laughs) we're multitasking this is true partnership right here because we're multitasking on the way to a wedding and uh so it may be a little bit louder not not as good audio quality but it's gonna be awesome yes yeah the audio quality is weird. That is exactly why we're in the car. So yeah, on our way to Chicago. So for the weekend and just so everybody knows, like we are totally not like relationship experts, but we are at least me. I don't know about you, honey, very happy in our marriage and relationship. And yeah, we've been together about 14 years. We've found some do's and don'ts for sure and we just want to share our keys to what we think a good relationship is rock and roll yeah so for those who may not know you go ahead and introduce yourself i am taylor premer i am a chiropractor by trade i specialize in sports medicine um i love my wife i love coffee i love wine golf yeah sports i like it all so anyway that's me (laughs) yep that is you okay so the basically structure of this episode i of course i love to prepare taylor likes on the fly which is totally cool uh so i prepared like a few things i pre-thought of some stuff but we're just really gonna in like no particular order go through some of the things that we think work really well for us the things that we've found work well so, yeah, do you have anything that you want to start off with? Um, I don't think so. I mean, I think in the if you listen to the first episode, it's going to be a common thing probably uh, amongst this this episode too is communication is kind of our, our number one key, if you will. So I think uh, it, it, our relationship hasn't always been built around communication, but it's definitely something that we uh, continue to work on, and it's probably the number one thing that we want to keep getting right or the number one thing that that keeps us right so is uh if our communication is off then uh we're off so yeah absolutely yeah and we're always trying to get better about that too and i think that's really really unique to every relationship Mm -hmm. too just you know we found like you know holes in our communication system we talked about this on the last episode too where we're just like in a season of life right now like our careers are really really 
taking up a huge piece of like our calendar um, by choice and we're both just like traveling all the time and so that's like added a layer of complexity to our communication and just like you know we're not always both home at the same time and and things like that and so kind of navigating that but I mean ultimately I guess kind of my tip around that is really just finding what works for you yeah I mean everything's a little bit different but I think uh once you stop communicating or if you feel the urge to not communicate certain things then that should be a red flag or you know like if you're purposely keeping things from your significant other that uh that should be a red flag that you're probably not communicating very well or there's some uh some gaps that need to be filled in because i mean it's just like it's just like anything i mean me i'm coming up from like let's say my patients are communicating how they're feeling to me throughout their treatment plan or whatever it is then i mean i'm missing essential pieces of you know how they're feeling throughout the day what are they doing throughout the day and stuff like that and it's the same in a relationship you know like if you uh I, I may not need to know every single detail of what you do in a day but i want to know the you know the ups and downs of, of how your work day was or you know how are you feeling energy wise or how you're feeling just in general then it's tough for me to be there to support you or to, to you know to, to, to be a good teammate if i don't know how you're feeling and i think that's something we struggled with too both of us at different periods of our relationship is like that unwillingness to, to give it all up or to, yeah. to really be completely honest with each other. And so uh, that's something that we've definitely worked on a lot is, uh, you know, like actually telling the truth and like actually telling your spouse how you're doing, even if it's not a uh, convenient time to uh, to tell it, just like get it out, get it off your lips and, and, and get it over with now versus later when it builds up and becomes something it shouldn't be. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I kind of think that as a red flag, too, if I find myself, like, not, you know, it's very rare anymore, like, if at all, but especially, like, back in the day, it's, like, if there wasn't something that I wanted to tell you or I was feeling like it was difficult for me to tell you, like, that's a red flag. Not necessarily a red flag in our relationship, but, like, where, you know, where is that coming from? Is it because I haven't fully processed it? Is it because I'm embarrassed if it is it because I'm afraid how you're going to react or respond to it or like what is that and that might be different for each thing that maybe you're having some difficulty telling your significant other you know it's probably very unique to the situation but kind of getting to the root of that like what is it actually because if you're afraid of how somebody might respond or react I mean like first of all we can't control (laughs) how somebody is going to respond or react to something but then also maybe communicating that, you know, like, hey, this is something that's difficult for me to tell you. I'm, you know, my mind's going a million different directions on how you're going to respond to this. And so I'm, I would just ask for you to be, you know, I would love, like... Some grace. Yeah, some grace or something around that, just, like, being able to communicate that. So, yeah. I like that. That's a good one to start out with. Beautiful. Uh, another one is probably going to trigger some people, but this is something that we feel so strongly about. And again, this is like, these things that we're talking about are unique to us. Take or leave anything you want. But a big one for us is refusing to accept somebody else's reality of relationships and marriage, like as our own or like how society deems a marriage or relationship and can, and really we choose what we want it to be so (laughs) examples of this sometimes are like marriage jokes like sometimes people are like oh well wait until you've been married for 20 years like you're not going to want to sleep in the same bed as each other you're going to want to um spend less time together or just things things like that and that's not what we want in our relationship and so it can be really difficult to really stand strong in what you want and not allow some of that conditioning or some of that pressure to try and tell you what your relationship is going to be like. Yeah, I think, I mean, we're in a world of like taboo relationships, basically, you know, Uh, sex is a great example of that. We've, we talked about on the first podcast too, of like, yeah, it's very mainstream, if you will, or taboo, whatever you want to call it that, you know, like once you get, you know, past kids and all that stuff, there's no reason to have sex. I mean, it's actually appalling to have sex with my significant other. And that's just ridiculous to me as you are in a relationship. I mean, it doesn't have to be anything more or less than you want it to be, but 
you know, part of being intimate with each other is, is kind of a bigger, a big part of our relationship, I know, yeah. and something that we think is a key to our relationship going forward is, is finding intimacy, and that doesn't always mean sex, but, you know, an intimacy in your daily life or your conversations and stuff like that, and, uh, you know, again, it just goes to defining what you want out of the relationship and what you define a successful relationship, what makes you happy, what actually makes you happy, not what the world tells you. Yeah. So... Yeah, I mean, yeah, sex and intimacy is a, is a big one. Um, I definitely see with a lot of, like, these comments about marriage and things like that because I think, you know, there's a lot probably to unpack there, but in my experience, you know, what I've seen is a lot of people who, uh, you know, either have just kind of lost that just connection or maybe even, like, respect with either their significant other or even themselves and, and also, you know, I've had some conversations with, you know, friends before who are like, I actually really like sex, but they feel like that's a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so they feel, they feel like they need to say things like, oh yeah, well, once you get married, it's like sex is downhill and all that kind of stuff. It's just like, it's like, I don't, you know, you don't have to be as open about it as like Taylor and I here are in these podcast episodes, but I don't know, just like staying true to you and what you want for your relationship. And just because other people are saying that, you know, it's downhill after marriage or, you know, after you've been together for a certain period or whatever, it's like you can, you know, you get to choose what you want your relationship to look like. Yeah. And that's, that's something that's worked really well for us is always just talking about what does, what does it look like for us? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, taking what other people say and learning from it. Yeah. Like, I, you know, if we're in a group of a bunch of different couples and maybe the women are together and the men are together and, uh, you know, how many times have we had conversation afterwards of like, yeah, they said this, it just made me feel uncomfortable about, you know, I, I would just never want you to say that or, you know, I would never yeah. find myself saying that about you. Do you feel the same? And so then just like having it as a learning experience. It's not like, you know, gossiping about the other couples and stuff like that, but just as an a open learning experience of, well, this kind of made me feel a little uncomfortable. Like, would it make you feel that way if you heard some? If you heard me talking about you, or vice versa? And so, I think that's another thing that we've uh, we've really tried to do is, you know, if you have a problem with your spouse, uh, to me, it's I'm going to take it up with you versus take it up with uh, you know a group of guys or you know a group of other people. So, I think that's just having the respect to have those conversations with you versus other people. Yes. Yeah. This one has been huge. This one, I can also thank my parents for. My parents always instilled this in me kind of growing up is, you know, not to like, not to talk bad about your spouse, like in public or in front of other groups. Um, really just like from a respect standpoint, you know, the respect stand, standpoint. And also again, like Taylor said, like, if you have a problem, like I want to go to Taylor first, you know, and I totally get, you know, it's okay to like, Event, if that's you know something that's beneficial for you but I don't know to me it's not productive for me to go to friends or groups of people or anything to try and solve any obstacle you and I have like mm-hmm. there isn't nothing I don't know to me it's not productive and and also that's you know other people don't know what's going on in a relationship either like you and I do and we can if there's an obstacle, we can solve it quickly, <laughs> much quicker. And, and yeah, I just, you know, to me, it's like, I want to respect you and I also want to have your back. And, and I think there's a difference yeah. between asking for help and bitching and moaning, yeah. you know, like yeah. there's a, there's a difference, yeah. you know, if you truly want help, how to approach your spouse and stuff like that, then sometimes it's a hundred percent reasonable to go ask your friends, you know, how would you do this? Or have you had any experience with this? But there's a difference between asking for help and complaining about it. Yeah, totally. Seeking a solution versus wanting to be heard. Yep. Yeah. I think that's good. Another thing that we've done, we kind of established even in the beginning of our relationship. I don't know if this was maybe like early college days. Um, I'm not sure, but everything is worth a full conversation. And I think, again, I think where this came from for me, and this is, you know, a great 
these are great opportunities for growth is seeing, you know, if you're out in the world, you're having conversations with people, you see things like in movies or just in public or like whatever, you're a part of something and it triggers you, you know, obviously always turning in like what, you know, why is that something that's triggering you? Is it something you need to look at? Like whatever. And for me, one of the things that always triggered me was being around people who would shut something down so fast. Like a spouse would would ask, like, hey, do you want to do this sometime? No. Or, hey, what if we tried this? No. Just like a really, really quick shutdown. And that's something that I, I have like seen people's faces when they get shut down like that. And that doesn't even mean you know, that's not exclusive to relationships. That's, you know, can be, you know, friendships, like coworker, boss, whatever. Uh, but that's something that I, I did early in our, (laughs) early in our relationship and don't anymore. It's like, let's, even if in my mind, I'm like, okay, no, (laughs) it's worth a full conversation and feeling like, you know, for us, because we respect each other, respecting each other enough to have a full conversation about something. If something is important to one of us, you know, having the other person listen, even if the answer is still no, at the end of the conversation, at least, at least having it and explaining it and going through it because I don't know, I think that also kind of goes back to communication is it's like, if I was always getting shot down for certain things, eventually I'm going to stop going to you, (laughs) you know, and vice versa. Like, so yeah, no, I think you, you approached it well. It's you never know until you have the conversation because sometimes out of the mouth, I, I'm terrible at this. I, I'm not a great wordsmith, you know. Like sometimes <laughs> I get my neither. words mixed up, and so half the time when it comes out of your mouth initially, it's not exactly what you wanted it to mean, anyways. And so yeah. until you unpack it and dive into it, to really get an idea of where that person's coming from, you don't have a great understanding of what it is, and so. Yeah, I just think like taking the time to unpack it and not being so reactive all the time uh, to, to different things like that is, yeah, I think that it's, and it just goes back to respect because then when you do that, then you have a, you know, there's a mutual respect for it. Um, whatever that decision is or whatever that conversation is, then at least there's some backstory between it. You understand where they're coming from and your perspective and, and usually you learn something about each other by doing it. Totally. Yeah. Yep. Another one I had is to, and I'm curious your take on this, Taylor, is to grow individually first and then grow together second. Mm. Um, and really, you know, this this is something that was actually really hard for me to grasp because I, most people probably wouldn't know this. A lot of people who know me well probably wouldn't think this about me, but I feel like a romantic person. Like I am, I guess not I'm a romantic person, but I'm definitely like into the romance piece of like, I, you know, I trying to think of an example for this. Like, of course, like I would love the idea of like you completing me, mm-hmm. you know, like going back to like the Jerry Maguire, like you complete me. Uh, I love the idea of that. However, I don't think that that's sustainable or necessarily healthy. Like that, I guess I've kind of found, I don't know for me, I think it's important to, you know, if you're pursuing happiness, to have that happiness be so deep that it's not dependent on something that can be taken away from you. Mm -hmm. And in relationships, that's really hard, I think. And so really not needing the other person to complete you, like feeling fulfilled and like you complete yourself and really being your own person first. And that, you know, usually get that way through growth work. And so to me, I think that's something that's helped me too is finding happiness on my own. And like, you are just like the biggest bonus of that. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Because I feel like that's where, that's something that I struggled with early on in our relationship is like needing you to make me happy. And like putting that on you and I don't think that's fair and also again like if you know Taylor's not having a good day or like we're traveling you know we haven't seen each other in a week all that kind of stuff like I want to be able to still like live a good like beautiful life even when we're not together and like not be reliant on you for that fulfillment yeah 
like it. Yeah, yeah, I've never thought of it that way, but yeah, I mean, I think that's a good way to, to look at it too because sometimes, we I think we told the story in the first one, like there's been times in our relationship where we'll look at each other in the kitchen after we, I get home from work and you know, you've had a long day. And, All right, who's going to be the positive one today? You know, like. <laughs> which is so rare when that happens. It is. Like maybe once a year now, which is good. But yeah, I mean, sometimes sometimes you do need that pick me up from, from your partner. Or, yeah. And, you know, sometimes you got to, you know, buck up and, and be that. But uh, to, to be able to just have bonus happiness on top of your already fulfillment is. A lot. Yeah, I, I, I love that. I wouldn't change anything about that. Cool. Yeah, I think actually even just like another way of even thinking about that is from the angle of... I'm trying to think how, how to word this. You know, when you... I don't know, if you have like an obstacle in really your relationship, like if you're trying to grow together first, but like one person is not growing as fast as the other person is you know we're trying to grow together it's almost like you are putting that responsibility on the relationship or the other person so like if somebody is really insecure for example if somebody's really insecure putting that on the relationship or the other person to like solve that is it's kind of selfish yeah yeah Yeah. and I think difficult what a strain right and so I think that's where like that's like a self growth thing like that is whoever is like experience that insecurity that's really more on them like that growth responsibility is on them so then they don't bring that to the relationship and we've all had things like that obviously just like insecurity as an example um everybody's experienced that but just also taking a look at like are you putting it on the relationship or does it like need to be turned around and is it your responsibility to kind of heal that and and grow from that so then you can come to the relationship and like continue to grow together yeah i I think it is and I, i think too if you are trying to grow at the same rate maybe as a way to look at it the same rate than if for some reason somebody takes a big stride or they have a big you know whatever a big jump in their business then it's really easy for the other person then to feel jealous or you know to feel not truly happy for the other person because then they feel behind and and it's not to say that there's not healthy competition in relationship especially like ours there definitely is yeah but if you're coming at it from a perspective of you know me truly growing and trying to be the best you i can be then the other person doing the same at the same time then it's just kind of a natural molding versus just like i don't know feeling like you're both pulling on two 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 separate sides of of the road yeah so yeah yeah that's good beautiful next one i have is be all in yeah like period (laughs) yeah it's just like be all in on the relationship uh and not one foot in like one foot out yeah i mean what what's the the office joke uh i looked up welding or wedding in the dictionary and it's the the burgeon of two metals (laughs) yeah Yeah, i mean that's kind of what marriage is you know that's what relationship is is the reason you do it is to try to up level yourself and to get some extra fulfillment on top of what you already have like we talked about and so why why half-ass it you know go all in because the end result is you get I mean, I got you. You know, I have a companion yeah. that's someone that I truly love spending time with that truly cares for me. You know, like, and the more you put in, the more you get out. And so, yeah. I mean, it's just like anything else in life. If you half-ass something, you're never you're never going to accomplish anything awesome. And so I think that's, that's, that's how I would look at it from a sport perspective, if you will. You know, if you just half-ass practice, which I think is relationship, then your games are shitty. Your life is shitty. You yeah. know, so... Uh, why? Why not? Why? Why not go all in? And it's not to say that you ha- you can only go all in in one thing. You know, like a relationship is one thing, career is one thing. You know, other family is another. So I think you know what you and I are working on right now is making sure that we can go all in in every section of our life and not you know go fifty percent here and a hundred percent here and sixty percent here. Is, is literally just going a hundred percent all in and, and uh, seeing what happens on the other side. So. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. You. Another one that I have is, and I see this especially, this lends itself to this high performance piece or this high achiever piece of a relationship is understanding 
ambition, understanding your own ambition and understanding the ambition of your significant other and getting kind of getting clear on like what that looks like because I have seen this a lot with my clients. They've come to me, they're like, you know, my spouse and I just have mismatched ambition and that is not a bad thing. But I see where usually that becomes a problem is from an expectation standpoint and you're expecting you know I mean so often I think as humans we expect of others what we do like if you are super super ambitious like somebody that's like I want to work like eight hours a day seven days a week or ten hours a day seven days a week or whatever then it's so easy for you to expect that of other people and I just think that's natural as humans we do that for things so I see that a lot in some relationships that I've you know had conversations with um some of the people and I think a lot of it just kind of comes from that expectation and you know for us like we truly do love like working a lot and you know almost every night like we are working on our laptops watching uh tv it's usually almost always something we've watched before like Parks and Rec or The Office so it's like kind of background noise but we can kind of get some laughs and giggles in together and get a few things off of our to-do list done but like that's something that truly fulfills us right. um I know there's a lot of people that are like but does it really like it does and that's something that we do feel pretty matched in is like is working at night and will we do that forever I have no idea I don't know but right now that's like a season of life that we enjoy and being able to sit next to each other and doing that um, is pretty cool so but that's something that we just like we got clear on too yeah and I think those those expectations or the uh, the ambition changes day by day too I mean sometimes yeah. both of us we get home and I'm like screw it I don't even want to yeah. think about it don't you know and it doesn't say it mean that you don't you know it's just like having yeah. the expectation that some days you feel differently and your energy is different and being okay with maybe that you know the one person needing or wanting to work that night and so it is what it is you know you we, we still allow that space and, and uh yeah it's just kind of an ongoing thing I guess with the ambition in that center and uh I, I think too of like what you were saying with expectations is communicating your expectation of yourself with your spouse you know like because if Taylor doesn't know what I'm trying to accomplish in life then she wouldn't understand why I'm doing the things that I'm doing yeah and vice versa you know like if I didn't know how you're trying to change the world then I wouldn't understand why you're on your laptop all the time or why you're you know you're writing down random things right before you go to sleep or you're you know whatever we're at a movie and you're writing something down on your phone like those ideas and stuff like if I didn't understand where that was coming from it would be annoying maybe or stuff like that but because I know that you're trying to change the world through your teaching and you know, the platform that you've built, then all those little things add up. And, and that's, I think it's kind of awesome now to, to look at it from that perspective. Yeah, I love that perspective. That's good. Yeah, I think, yeah, totally communicating like the vision and the why behind why you're, why you're working so hard or why you're doing the things that you're doing, why you're filling your calendar and your task list with those things. And another thing that I see quite a bit too um, is really when it comes to rest and white space and vacation a lot of times there's this mismatched expectation of ambition or work and you know like if you're on vacation maybe one person like you get back to the hotel room early and one person wants to open up their laptop and check emails or finish writing something or publish a blog post or whatever it is. And the other person is like, hey, we're on vacation. Like, we're here to rest. I just think that's a conversation, mm -hmm. you know. And again, like, just getting really tangible on what that looks like. Maybe setting some boundaries, you know, because if you are on vacation, like, have the conversation ahead of time of what does how does work fit in or not fit in on the vacation and so this was something like we just went on our Arizona birthday trip we did kind of a road trip around Arizona like northern Arizona it was a ton of fun we did that a few weeks ago and I communicated to Taylor I was like hey I'm not gonna work on the trip 
and I don't think I did maybe at all but you had some things that you wanted to finish up like you were also doing like podcast some podcast stuff and you had to do some posts on social media and different stuff like that and you also told me like hey there's some things that like I got to do it's like great fine and like having that communication was huge because I think that that's like when you get on the vacation that's something that can create a lot of argument and like built up tension and stuff if one person like if I were to have not communicated with you and for me I decided I'm not going to work on this vacation and then you I found you doing some work then that would have been upset me yeah it could have been a trigger yeah totally so uh thinking about things like that I think just getting tangible you know if you're somebody who works more in your relationship than your significant other or vice versa just getting just getting clear on like like Taylor said the why and kind of the vision making sure that that's communicated and also making them a part of it bringing them into that and then secondly just getting tangible on does it look like changing up the schedule or does it work does it look like hey, that's awesome, but, like, no work after 8 p.m. or no work after 9 p.m., like, that's our time or or whatever. Hey, I wanted to hop in here real quick to say that if you're digging this podcast, I would love nothing more than for you to take a screenshot of you tuning in or a screenshot of your phone, share it on Instagram stories, and tag me so we can connect. And in doing so, not only does it help me reach more people with this podcast, but it also inspires all your amazing high achiever friends to pursue growth as well. Okay, if you know me, you know how obsessed I am with clean, non-toxic products. I've spent over 10 years trying different products and brands. None of them have lived up to Primally Pure. Their products are 100% natural and toxin-free and help support radiant skin, a healthy body, and a happy self. My absolute favorites are the charcoal deodorant, the everything spray, the lip balm, the oil cleanser, and okay, well, I'll just save us both some time and tell you that I haven't tried a product that I don't love. If you're looking for some super clean products to add to your skincare and home routines, then head to primallypure.com or click the link in the show notes. Use code HEYTAYLOR10 at checkout for 10% off your entire purchase. Let it be easy and let it be fun. This is something that, you know, this always hasn't, this hasn't always been the case for us, but one thing that I've been really proud about the work that we've done in our relationship is that it is to me it's the easiest part of my life is our relationship and I'm not saying that really your relationship should be the easiest part of your life but we've done so much work that we've kind of gotten it to that point but also we let it be easy you know there's so much let it be imperfect and yeah 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 totally and and yeah and let it be fun like you guys you know if you have like committed to your significant other for life like guess what like you guys are partners for life just like have fun like life is also about having fun so have fun together have fun within your relationship and and make it joyful yeah just like we always talk about in business with culture you know like you got to make work fun because you spend half your time half your life basically at work or yeah however much that is I'm no different than relationship I mean relationship should be the thing that you're spending the most time on realistically you know because we're together the most and stuff like that so if you're not having fun man oh man that's gonna get old fast so yeah for sure there was I was listening to a podcast oh man a couple weeks ago I don't remember what maybe it was a couple months ago I don't remember what podcast but the person that was being interviewed was talking about there was this like big time divorce attorney out of New York and she was asked in an interview one time what makes the best relationship and she replied now I can't remember the number I should have looked it up before the podcast but she replied something like 15,000 dinners whatever and people were like what 15,000 dinners what you know what does that mean and she's like if you think about when you're like picking somebody to spend the rest of your life with on average you're gonna have 15,000 dinners with them so can you have 15,000 dinners with this person (laughs) and again 15,000 might not be the exact number but it was something like that and I was like oh yeah that's that's totally true that's right like can you yeah like can you have that many dinners with that person so 
and just, yeah, just have fun at dinner too. So another one that was like really, really difficult. Actually, I think this was probably really, really difficult for both of us, but if I were to pick one thing that we've done in our relationship, that's made the biggest change or the biggest impact is setting our ego aside (laughs) as like as much as possible. Again, we're not perfect at it, but like respecting each other, being a team and just like understanding that like you, you aren't against each other. Right. You know, 99% of the time, like you, you're going to be supportive with each other and you're on the same team. So like allow that person in and, and just set your ego aside, <laughs> like supporting the other person, not tearing them down. And, and also knowing that a majority of the time, even if they say something that you're just, you don't like how they said it or what they said or whatever, majority of the time, everything is coming from love and support, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and vice versa. Like when you're replying or responding or doing something in your relationship, having that come from love and support. So I have this really... (laughs) really random micro example of this that again we didn't always used to do this but when we are sitting at a stoplight and like if Taylor's driving and I'm not driving if he's just kind of like looking around and it's no longer a red light it's a green light I say like you can go baby like almost every time and I could say it in a way that's like, like, what are you doing? Like dummy, (laughs) like go, it's green. You know, I can be like, what are you, like, what are you doing? But that's not what I want. Like I want to be loving and supportive and I genuinely, genuinely want to help him. Like, (laughs) Hey, just letting you know the light's green. Like you can go baby, like saying it nicely. And he can also interpret it as I'm trying to tell him what to do, or he can see it as support and like say, thank you. Right. And I think that's a really great example of like setting the ego aside, you know, cause you could be like, I know, I know, but you don't, you're like, thanks. That's true. I mean, that's, that's what really happened today already. I mean, that's, that's a real yeah. life example. So <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, that's, it's pretty classic. So yeah, I mean, shit, that's, that's pretty dang good. Yeah. I had nothing else to say about that. That was a good example. <laughs> yeah. But the, yeah, the ego thing, it's, I mean, again, I think that's, you know, that also can kind of go back to like growing individually and then together is, is just, yeah, trying to like build a better relationship with yourself. So you aren't like hot headed or anything like mm-hmm. coming to something like with eco or, uh, yeah, pride. That's another one. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So Yeah. Love it. Okay, this next one's kind of for you. (laughs) And it's finishing arguments quickly. (laughs) Uh, I'm still working on this. But when we first started dating, like, how bad was it? Like, I was... I mean, we both had our our stuff with this. But the thing I see, and I, I hear people talk about this all the time, too, is like, you know, well, if she says she's fine, just know she's not you know, or, you know, whatever, everybody's got their quirk. And, and I mean, it's, it's kind of the truth. I hate that it's true, but because it's kind of crazy, but for the most part, like, I don't know. I just think like uh, a a big cue for us is just, just let's just fight now. So we don't have to fight later and not in a bad way. Just like, Hey, we're obviously not agreeing here. We both are kind of frustrated with each other. Let's just air it out now while we have the time versus doing it later when it's an inconvenient time. Because yeah. what would happen a lot of times with us is we would let things... Because we're, we're both stubborn. Very, yes. <laughs> Fact. What would happen is that we would uh, get into a disagreement. We would let it simmer for an extended period of time. We would... This was in college. Yeah. We would usually have too much to drink. Yeah. <laughs> and then we would have an argument. And, yeah, and, it was uh, always it was always at the bars. Like when yep. we'd go downtown in college at the bars, that was always like when we would argue. Yep. It's like that's a mix of never like nothing yeah. good because <laughs> nothing good ever happened from it. Like yeah, yeah, no. we would we would get it all out and then we'd be frustrated for a day and then we'd forget about what we were fighting about instead of just having that conversation before while we were in a good state of mind one and then two while we had the time and the quietness in the right space instead of 
blowing up in front of your friends and family or, you know, like having these some, you know, what I think are awkward conversations around other people that I want it to be between you and I, you know, how many times are you at a, at a restaurant or at a family event and, uh, two spouses are going at it about each other, but they involve everybody else. I mean, that is the most awkward thing. Or just have tension between each other. Like, or just not being nice to each other and not really talking or acknowledging each other at all. Right. We right. totally did that in college. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean and we're like for everybody's context, like we are both Aries, Enneagram threes, and that is like a big like tendency of those personalities and we both have that. Mm-hmm. And that was something that we just had to grow yeah. we had to grow beyond. But again, I think you know, some of the similar themes like setting the ego aside because it's like of course like who doesn't want to be right right like humans just inherently like we want to be right you know we never want to be proven wrong anything like that and not that there's always a right and a wrong person in an argument but being able to just set your ego aside and just kind of get to the root of the problem and sometimes it's just like hey yeah like we don't agree on this but it it just is what it is. Like, maybe we'll talk about it in the future. Like, what you know, whatever. Um, yeah. And then I think also being being, a, being honest with each other. So kind of going back to the I'm fine. Oh, my gosh. I did that all the time when we first started dating. It was just like, I'm fine. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Just until like it short, wasn't. Until it wasn't. Yeah. And then there would be a big blow up. And it's like, instead of just being like, hey... Yeah, you know, I'm really feeling this way. Well, actually, this brings up another good point because a lot of times it's fine, I'm fine, like everything's fine language. You know, that doesn't always come from a relationship standpoint. Sometimes it's like you just like had a bad day Mm -hmm. or like you're down about something. But because you let it go on so long and you don't let your partner in, then it becomes a relationship thing. That's, yep. Like, I know for me, I had, I don't know, probably... (laughs) Like, all my girls listening probably have had this too. Like, how many, like, closet blow-ups did I have where I was just, like, a meltdown in my closet uh, because, like, I didn't like what I had to wear. Things like that. That's, like, a me thing. But because you're, like, what's wrong? Like, is everything okay? How can I help you? And I was, like, shutting you out. Like, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And then eventually I would blow up and it would it brought you into it more, right. <laughs> you know, which isn't like productive. It's like a me thing. And then I, it turned into a me thing and a relationship thing instead of just being like, I'm really just upset right now because I just feel like I don't have anything to wear and I don't really like the clothes that are in my closet. And I'm just trying to figure that out. Like, and that's a cue for me to <laughs> Michael Jackson, uh, moonwalk my way out of that conversation and understand where you're coming from, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Wow. And just be like, that, okay, I get it. Yeah. Nothing I can do in that moment is going to change anything. Yeah. You know, I could be there to support you and, you know, give you a pat on the back or, you know, slap you on the butt and say, you yeah. know, work you'll, up. You, you'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, or, you know, whatever. So, yeah, I think just, again, going back to communication, if you just communicate the way you're feeling, yeah. then it's so much easier to one head off big blow-ups and then two if you can just have small conversations about a large yeah chip away at something yeah Yeah. then yeah then it's so much more manageable you know it's it's uh it's so much easier to have these big overarching conversations whatever it might be even if it's a huge disagreement on principles if you just slowly chunk it away you know then then before you know it you're kind of closer than you thought and uh you know you can understand where both people are coming from and then it doesn't seem like such a big deal. Yeah, for sure. So. Yeah, and I think lastly on this is a lot of it kind of, it comes back to time for me. And you, you've you done this like the last like few years when it's just like, no, like it's fine. You know, if I'm still doing that, which I pride myself on, I don't do it as much as I used to, but sometimes I still do. And you're just like, hey, like, let's talk about this now. It's more productive. Like, you saying the word, like, productive gets me like, okay, you're right. I don't want to waste time. I don't want to waste life and, like, be in this weird, like, limbo spot. Yeah. And so, for me, you know, it's just, like, time is so precious. And both, like, I just think about if you and I were to have an argument in college and I'm so stubborn. Well, both of us are stubborn. Like, if we're kind of playing this, like, silent treatment game, I'm not going to lose. 
Like, you know, in my mind, I'm like, I'm not losing. So I will, I will be silent for days. I mean, I wasn't, but there were times where it'd be hours and hours and hours, you know, of like either just silent treatment or whatever. And it's like, why, like, again, I just needed to set my ego aside. It's like, why would I waste time, precious life of like hours just trying to like save my pride? Right. (laughs) You know? Right. Fight fast and make up fast. Yeah, for sure. And um, I don't think fight is a bad word. We keep saying fight. Just I say argument. Yeah, argument, whatever. I, I just think like uh, whatever you you decided, yeah. just uh, just have the discussion and uh, get it over with. You know. Yeah. That's what I would say about that. Yeah. Getting on the same page with finances. This one I think is huge. Also because you think about it, I mean, I don't know, I can't remember what the stats are, but that's like one of the number one reasons that people get divorced is money. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think I mentioned this in our previous episode too, of just, for me, it was about understanding that we find different value in different things. And like, you love wine, so like spending 80 to $100 on a bottle of wine is like, you get so much value and joy out of that. And like for me, like I like wine, but for me, I'm like, I'm cool with a $20 bottle of wine. Um, and again, it's just like understanding that that's like what you see value in. So me not being like, why would you spend money on that? Um, you know, and like I love buying ethically made clothing. So me spending... You know, if Taylor spends like $80 on a bottle of wine, sees value in that. Like, I see value in like an $80 organic cotton, like sweatshop free shirt, (laughs) you know? But like, you wouldn't buy that for you. Like, you would be cool with like $10 tea or whatever, you know? And so I think that like mindset shift is huge. And I mean, I think a lot of this too comes from like money beliefs and just like money mindset as well also kind of goes back to like growing individually it's like what is there like any internal work and like individual work that you need to do on your own around any limiting money stories or beliefs that you have that maybe you're bringing to the relationship I mean I think we probably you and I probably had a lot of the same ones Um, but like we even mentioned in the car (laughs) earlier today I don't remember what we were talking about but it was like we're both um a little stingy with money in different areas which is kind of interesting but it almost like balances out a little bit and I think uh not keeping score like yeah just because you spend eighty dollars on a shirt doesn't mean that I have to go spend eighty dollars on something else like you you can it's not that we're holding each other it's just like not keeping score in the fact like oh I don't deserve anything because you did it like we're both adding to our income and we're both spending the same money basically but it doesn't you know like obviously if one person is exceeding your means and you're having these crazy expenses and stuff then it would, it's a good idea to have that conversation sooner rather than later but you know if you're on the same page as far as what you're getting enjoyment out of and that's what you're spending the money on then it's difficult to say hey you need to stop doing that because I know that it makes you happy and vice versa so yeah yeah totally I, I just think uh, money's a difficult thing. It, it really is. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, yeah there, there's not a lot. Because I know that that's been a, a lot of questions that you've gotten is, well, my husband does this or my wife does this. How do I get them to stop doing that? Well, you, you have to have that conversation with them about why they're doing that in the first place or, you know, yeah. what enjoyment or what fulfillment they're getting out of that, I don't know, manicure or pedicure or, you know, going to the bar with their their friends or whatever it is that the, you don't like them spending money on then like you've got to then figure out what their enjoyment is out of that and if it's coming from a place of goodness or you know if they are truly getting fulfillment out of it then you've got to be able to, to kind of get your mind wrapped around that and, and be somewhat okay with it because if they're getting f- true fulfillment out of it it's probably a good thing yeah for sure for sure and I think also like again you know like everything is worth a full conversation that's just kind of like a standard in our relationship and so you know not like shooting each other down if it's like hey I want to do this or I want to get this not shooting each other down like no no we're not spending money on that Mm -hmm. just like okay talk to me about why you want that like and then have a conversation make a decision like together right um that's kind of how we approach a lot of that yeah and like really our money mindset too is just it's always 
always getting better as both of us are, are growing. That's that's just getting better. Yeah. So. Yep. Uh, being intimate regularly. Mm-hmm. So, and that doesn't always mean sex. I said intimate for a reason. Um, yeah, I just think that's super important. Like, for us, that's just been a really important aspect of our relationship. It's the love guru. Intimacy into me, I see. Yeah. No, I don't <laughs> yeah, think I've yeah. seen that. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I just think like uh, it's almost. I I struggle with this more than you. I mean, I, you you crave intimacy a little bit more than I do as far as physical touch throughout the day. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And so it's something that I've been working on too. But um, yeah, I just think like making room for it and making the time for it, and understanding the other person's needs. Like I know sometimes like I can walk in the door after work and I know that like okay like she's craving some <laughs> physical touch and again it doesn't mean yeah. sex nobody bonk us but like you know sometimes you just like you crave getting a hug or just like yeah. we're making dinner and you laying on me or you know doing things yeah. like that like all that is awesome and sometimes it get I get annoyed with it but then I have to remind myself the reason you're doing it is because again like you you craved that that's yeah. something that you need or you you know something to give you a little bit of a boost and so you know making making room for that is I mean, that's that's the best piece of relationship is it not yeah. of like having someone that truly cares about you enough that they want to literally touch you when you yeah. walk through the door like that's that's so awesome yeah yeah wow. for sure and then I think that brings up another good point too like that was a conversation that we had about a year ago of like I work from home all day long usually by myself you see how many patients in a day mm-hmm. you know uh I basically have, yeah, I basically have 30 to 35 meetings every 15 minutes a day. So I'm seeing. So he has a lot of human interaction in a day and I don't. So that's something that, yeah, we had a conversation, like you approached me and we're just like, Hey, like this is something that, you know, I kind of just like need to decompress. Like when I come home and all that kind of stuff, it was like, yeah, totally get that. So I am just more aware of that. I mean, it's, and I, I, I think I see this a lot too. I mean, if I, I just get, I get more emotionally exhausted at the end of the day because I'm, and, and mentally exhausted because I'm working through so much complex stuff throughout my day. And it, not to say that I do more than you or I'm more important yeah. or anything like that. It's just like that's, you know, it's just a little bit more uh, emotionally draining. And so, yeah, understanding that you may need a little bit more of that. Yeah. And it's a tough balance. I mean, it's something that we struggle with every day, and it's it's yeah. something that, you know, we, we continue to get better at. But, I mean, it's a difficult thing. I, I think just having enough grace with your spouse to know that, like, sometimes, again, like, if you're not 100% fulfilled by yourself, then if you're depending on that other person, then sometimes there's going to be holes in your day and your life mm-hmm. that, you know, not to say that you can't depend on your spouse, but, it, you know, just getting more extra stuff from your spouse versus everything. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So. Yeah, I think also kind of with the intimacy piece, you know, like we were talking about like mismatched ambition, obviously a lot of times there's mismatched, you know, uh, what am I trying to say? Libido, Mm -hmm. too. That's something to like definitely, definitely have a conversation about because like I've had, you know, I've had friends like for example, that's like one of them, you know, one of them would like love to like every day. And the other one is like, for me, it's like three times a month. It's like, you know, that's definitely mismatched in expectations, but just talking through it and finding common ground, not that you necessarily have to compromise or meet in the middle, although that is usually probably what works best, but thinking about that too, um, yeah, and just having a conversation about it. Yeah, to throw away the relationship because you didn't have the conversation to me is a giant waste. You know, yeah. like if you if you're willing to just throw it away or go outside of the relationship to find fulfillment and for those needs, then without having that conversation, I mean, talk about a, a missed opportunity. You know, like that is uh, that'd be tough. Yeah, totally. Uh, next one, knowing love languages helps. <laughs> we yeah. don't have. We don't have a ton of conversations around these, but it's something that, I don't know, for me, I try and kind of be a little more aware of. 
and also I think it depends too on seasons of life. Like I do think love languages change season of during seasons of life. And I think that since we have like been in this really heavy travel season, like we've had some times where like we see each other one or two days a week, we might be gone for like you know, not see each other for like seven days. Like if I'm, you know, in Nebraska or Arizona or whatever, and just like, we just, we have a lot of airport trips. Yeah. <laughs> and so we're not like the last like two years of our relationship, we've been physically apart more often than like ever since we've known each other. And that's, I mean, it hasn't been hard, but it's, I mean, it's definitely not our preference. Like right. we prefer to be together physically every day. But I've noticed since we've been traveling more, like physical touch is totally my love language mm -hmm. right now because it's like great. Like we've got three days together this week and we're both like in town and like home. And just like, I just like, yeah, want to be hugging and like holding hands and snuggling. And that's like a huge thing for me right now. But I think it does, it does help to just have an idea of your significant other's love language. Like both of us too, like we've gotten, we've definitely gotten some flack for like the physical gift thing. We've just never been physical gift people. I think like the first like two or three years of our relationship, we did that. And then afterwards we just stopped getting each other gifts because it just isn't our thing. Like that's probably the least one for us. Yeah. And and it sucks too because we both suck at giving gifts to other people. And yeah, so like, because, because it's not our uh, love language. It's so, so it's we're so I always feel terrible. Like for example, like we're going to a wedding this weekend. Like I got we got him a, a nice bottle of wine, and I feel I feel like I would have loved to get that, but then I'm always like, oh well, shit, are we are we doing enough? Like is that right. is it going to be received well? Like what's the so yeah, it's that, that's the least of my concerns. But I, I think also, but that's a that's a great conversation to have because sometimes. I'll hear it with my patients. Mm. The wives will be like, I'll say, oh, well, you know, is your husband getting anything for Mother's Day? Oh, I don't really like gifts, but I, he always finds a way to get me something. Yeah. But it's like, well, if you would have had the conversation, then he's not stressing about that. And then maybe yeah. you do, you know, like in, for us, we would much rather, you know, go somewhere. go somewhere, go on a vacation, spend time with each other, doing something, than for me to get you jewelry because I'm going to, pick out the wrong stuff probably and yeah, uh, I'd always gonna... rather pick my own stuff exactly. out exactly yeah so uh, I just think like if you're not having a conversation and you know I, at first I thought love language was you know whatever yeah. I'm not much of a personality trait guy like you yeah. are and, and that kind of stuff but it really is telling I mean and it's such an easy quiz it's I don't know yeah. how much it took 10 minutes and yeah. I think it gave me a lot of information and it made me feel better about it because you're you're not just snowing me by saying that you don't like physical uh, gifts, you know, you're, you're telling the truth. And so now I feel comfortable not getting you something. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then I think, you know, it's just like also kind of with the love languages, I know it talks a lot about too, like whatever your love language is more times than not, you give that way. Like right. that is how you show love. And that might not be the, your significant other's preferred way so it's like I can also see sometimes some friction kind of created in a relationship so let's say like somebody's uh you know someone's love language is acts of service and their significant other maybe that's like fourth or fifth on the list so you know the first spouse if they're like hey I went out and washed your car today you know, and for them, that's something they would love to receive, but like, that's how they give. And the other spouse is like, cool, thanks. Right. You know, brush it's like, it off, yeah. and they kind of brush it off. It's, you know, most likely it's not because they didn't think it was nice. It's just like, that's not where it hits them. That's not like where it lands the best, right. you know, whereas like maybe theirs is words of affirmation, you know, then it's like, how can you, how can you give more of that? So yeah, I know that's like love language is a really cliche relationship thing but I mean it works so yep. sure. yeah uh, and then last one that I had is choosing joy and just like laughing and playing together life's too short to not have fun yeah yeah 
Yeah, you know, life gets old if you don't have fun, you know, like. Oh my gosh, yeah. It's not to say that we have fun every single second of every day, but we try. I mean, it's much, it's, it's more fun when we have fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pools are great for holding water. Exactly. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, and I, I think like, uh, you know, in happiness advantage, that's like the biggest ploy that Sean Eichhorn tries to convey is that if you just choose happiness or if you seek it out in your day, even if it's something small, then it, there's a compound effect of that. Then you find more things and then the people around you are happier. And then next thing you know, you have a community of people that are happy and choosing joy every single day. And then, I mean, holy cow, what a cool life to be able to be surrounded by people all day long that are choosing joy, choosing happiness, choosing to do the things that they want to do in life and your spouse included. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is something that I don't know, like, especially just the last, I'd say the last like four or five years of our relationship, but like, especially the last like 12 to 18 months, like 12 months probably. It's just, I don't know. There's just been a lot of joy, like every day. And like, I can tell like in our days and again, like there's a reason I said choosing it's because we, we choose that, you know, a lot of times, like even if you have a bad day, you can still choose joy and right. happiness. Like you totally can. That's, you know, that's like a piece of personal responsibility is and, and creating like what you want more of. And, you know, there's plenty of times where Taylor might come home and he's just like, Oh, my day, you know, kind of got away from me or this happened or whatever but then like he's in such a good mood like after that it's like it's totally cool to just like be real about what's going on but you also don't have to like if something is not going the way you want it to like you don't have to let it continue on you don't have to let it completely consume your day and it's like I can't remember there's like definitely a viral quote that goes around I don't remember like the original person that said it but it's did you have a bad day or did you have a bad 15 minutes that you let go into an entire day? Right. And I think that you and I do that really well. That's something that we've really worked on individually and that's really amplified our relationship. Yeah. It's just being, just being in good moods, but yeah. not like in a fake way. Like right. Yeah. Just choosing it. Not cheesy, but yeah. 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 I mean, it's, I always give the analogy, again, I go back to sports when I know, you know, like if uh, I always had the conversation with, let's say my athlete tears their ACL and they get to go have surgery, like it's okay to be upset about it in the moment, mm -hmm. you know, like take a day, cry about it, whatever. But then like from then on, you got to start choosing to exceed and choosing to find joy and choosing to make it a good experience. And then the next thing you know, like it would actually turn out to be a good thing, you know, like that argument you had with your spouse, it turns out it's a good thing because you learn something about yourself, about your relationship, and then from there on, I mean, now you just continue to grow, and now you're just climbing the pyramid, you yeah. know, up and up and up, and your relationship's better for it. Yeah, totally. And I mean, I think that that's what a relationship is. You know, it's a work in progress. It's it's yeah. a practice. It's it's never a, a an end goal. You know, it's a continuous work of of art. Yeah. And uh, that's what makes it so much fun, too. I, I think, you know, like, it's it's just uh, you continue to work at it every single day. There's no such thing really as perfection, and uh, it makes it fun. Yeah. Challenging. Yep. Fun. Yeah. Rewarding. All those things. Yeah. I go on. One last one that I didn't put on my list, but I kind of forgot about is, like, also just seeing, just, like, being equals like yeah. in a relationship like truly just like being partners that's I think that's always been great too so I agree I don't know what are some is there anything that we missed that's like some of like your top keys to a high performing like love filled relationship no I think I, I think we covered most of them. I, I think if I had yeah. to narrow it down it would be in, in our four wall, I just think of it our relationship kind of like a house. Like yeah. in our four walls, there's openness, there's trust in communication. You know, like, and mm -hmm. in, in not all those things are, are continually said outward, but it's just an understood principle of our relationship is that I know I can 100% trust you yeah. and you can 100% trust me. Uh, I'm going to be 100% open and honest with you at all times. 
it, maybe not in public around them, but in our house and our, our four walls of relationship, you know, like I'm always going to be open with you and then, uh, you know, we're going to communicate and we know it's going to be maybe sometimes a little not perfect and it could be whatever, a little, a little sketchy or not come out the way we <laughs> wanted to, but it's always going to be uh, communication and, and improving on that. And then, you know, we're just going to continue growing. So, yeah. And just understanding it's a work in progress. Yeah. I think that's another thing. Like, people get so caught up in, well, you know, my relationship sucks. Well, your relationship probably doesn't suck. It's like you had a, a shitty day, like you said, in your relationship, yeah. and then that's an opportunity for growth, and what you do with it is that's that's what determines what happens next. So. Yeah. 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 You? You made the list, so I'm pretty sure you got everything. <laughs> I did, yeah. I wanted to kind of pre-think out... I've just been kind of adding to it the last like few weeks as I think of things as like we go throughout our days and stuff but I think for me the biggest one kind of going back to one of the beginning ones that we talked about I mean I totally agree with everything you said with the trust and communication and openness it's huge and also just choose like choosing the relationship that you want and like understanding that you and your significant other have way more want to say the word control you guys have you know you and your significant other have way more I don't know what am I trying to say just more uh just like choose alignment like make it what you want I think control is a good thing you have you, yeah. you have control over what the relationship feels like and looks like and yeah yeah based on your decisions and your communication yeah totally yeah. I don't I wasn't there a question about books and stuff that of like uh, our top relationship books um, I guess we kind of talked about that in the first one, but yeah. we really don't. I, we didn't, maybe someone asked me about that, but I don't know. I don't really have any yeah. good relationship books. I mean, love, love language, I think is a is a decent one, but yeah, I just we yeah, I think yeah, we did talk about it in episode okay. six, and we both kind of yeah, same answer. Like a lot of the books that we recommendations we gave were ultimately books that helped ourselves become better versions of ourselves which then we were able to come to our relationship as a like better person like I think you did mention happiness advantage because that was a huge one for you and that totally changed our relationship Mm -hmm. like you reading that book um just like the growth that you did so like from that so All right, so last question that I have on my podcast is what is one habit or routine that keeps you feeling aligned and limitless? That's a good question. I, man, I, I wasn't prepared for that. I think <laughs> I, I think uh, I think just waking up every day uh, excited to get better. Yeah. You know, like we always at the office uh, we kind of talk about it. at the end of the day, you kind of get beat down. You think about, you know, you kind of had a hard day, whatever it might be, you're exhausted, and somehow you wake up the next morning ready to go. And I think that's like, you, I, I just choose to wake up that way every morning. Like some mornings I wake up, I don't feel great. I'm like, yeah. eh, I don't really want to go to work. But then like being able to kind of get myself rolling enough to, to choose that this is going to be a good day. Yeah. So I think that would be one. And then uh, music for me is another good good one and so like if I have one of those days where I wake up and I'm like kind of grinding to get myself like hyped up and pumped up putting on music that that gets me in that mood or kind of gets me gets my mind uh ready to roll then uh, I think that's a good thing um yeah I think that and then uh taking care of my body too I think yeah. like eating well and uh making You're sure that, that yeah making sure that you know I'm, I'm mentally and physically ready to roll every single day uh, it is an important one. Yeah. So. I like it. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, thanks for being back on the podcast. Anytime. <laughs> and I'll have you on next quarter at minimum. I can't wait. What are we going to talk about then? I have no idea. Okay. Perfect. We'll see. We'll let everybody decide. We'll figure it out. Send me a DM at Hey Taylor Thompson what you want us to talk about next. Maybe we'll interview somebody together. Yeah. Bring an expert on okay. since we're not the experts <laughs> you speak for yourself come on yeah exactly <laughs> nope i love you proud of you for for doing this it's uh truly an awesome podcast and uh yeah it's it's uh as someone that has its own his own podcast i enjoy listening to yours just as much so it's, Thank uh, you. it's fun so 
like, subscribe, unlike, or unsubscribe, then subscribe again. Download all the podcasts. Yeah, download episodes, yes. (laughs) Awesome. Thanks, babe. All right, love you. Love you, too. Thank you for joining us this week. Before you go, make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you can receive new episodes right when they're released. And if you're enjoying this podcast, I'd love for you to leave us a review in Apple Podcasts. Reviews are one of the major ways that Apple ranks their podcasts. So even though it only takes a few seconds, it really does make a huge difference. Lastly, you can head to my Instagram post today and comment your biggest takeaway from this episode so we can keep the conversation going. Thank you so much for listening and I will see you next time.